From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your call to Stanford, sir. Oh, thank you, operator. Hello? Oh, Mr. Dollar, I'm so glad you called. Well, you seem pretty anxious to talk about something, Miss Harkness. I am, about Donald and his uncle, and Donald's plan for the expedition to Egypt. To dig up the remains of the old pharaoh Kamashek? Yes. Can you come over here to see me, please? Oh, when I talked to you on the station platform a while ago, you said something about the curse of Kamashek. Yes. Isn't that nothing more nor less than superstition? No. Huh? I'm afraid that in this case, Mr. Dollar, it can mean nothing more nor less than murder. I'll take the first train. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Inter-Allied Life Insurance Company, Crutchfield Square, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, The Curse of Kamashek Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 4, 320, cab to the station, train fare from Hartford to Stamford, and cab to the modest but attractive apartment of Dorothy Harkness. The short trip gave me time to think. Eric Turnbull, wealthy retired businessman, called me in on this case. Turnbull, uncle of young Donald Cronin, entirely in control of a large trust fund for the boy. Turnbull, who was determined to prevent him from making an expedition to the tomb of Kamashek, on the excuse that he suspected a plot against the boy's life, engineered by Dorothy Harkness, who was not only Donald's fiancée, but a beneficiary of his $100,000 life policy. So a talk with Dorothy Harkness seemed very much in order. Oh, Come in, Mr. Dollar. I'm so glad you were willing to come and talk with me. How are you, Miss Harkness? You make me sound so old. It's Dorothy. Won't you sit down? All right. Thank you. But before we go any further, Dorothy, I think you ought to understand that I'm an insurance investigator, and so oh, far... Oh, I know that. Donald told me his uncle was going to send for you. But there's been no claim file, no reason for one. I know. Mr. Turnbull does, well, kind of unusual things now and then, and I guess this is one of them. Unless he's trying to prevent whatever might cause a claim to be filed. Mr. Dollar, I don't know what Mr. Turnbull has told you about me, but I'm sure it wasn't good. I'm afraid we don't get along very well. Well, it's uh, pretty obvious he doesn't like your interest in his nephew, Donald. I've known Donald since school, Mr. Dollar, and we... we hope to get married. At least Donald does. Oh? And what about you? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I got the impression from Mr. Turnbull you were doing a pretty good job of getting Donald into your clutches. But that isn't the way it is at all. We've been seeing a great deal of each other, and Donald has asked me to marry him. And I'm fond of him, Mr. Dollar, terribly fond of him. But so far as marriage is concerned, I... I'm not sure. What do you mean? I can't help wondering all the time if he isn't hoping to marry me just as a... well, as an escape from his uncle. Uh-huh. Would you marry him? If I were sure... Of him? You'd be sure of an awful lot of money, Dorothy. What? The minute he reached 30, that is. Mr. Turnbull has poisoned your mind, Mr. Dollar. What money Donald has or may have has nothing to do with it. That sort of thinking is filthy. I, um, I guess you mean that, don't you, Dorothy? Yes. I think I've loved Donald ever since my father brought him into the museum. Your father? Yes, he's curator of archaeology. Well, how does he feel about Donald and you? His only interest in Donald is in the money, the financial support he gives the museum. Oh, Since that's... Mother died, he's become a grasping, self-centered old man whose only interest is in the museum. I see. So I don't live with him anymore. Well, then I take it he opposes any thought of your marrying Donald. He wants me to string him along for his money and scientific contributions. But Donald is making something of himself. Instead of wasting his life in idle luxury as Mr. Turnbull would have it, or would he rather have Don increase the family fortune? No. No, just not spend it. That's all he cares about. So if anything should happen to Donald, there would be more left for Mr. Eric Turnbull. And that's why I called you. Because I'm afraid that if Donald does go on this expedition to Egypt, something will happen to him. Oh, now, wait a minute. Turnbull has objected strenuously to this latest expedition. You don't know them yet. Either of them. 
They're of the same stock, and they're both stubborn, determined, and willful, and his uncle is clever. Clever enough to play on this stubbornness. Capitalize on it. What's that supposed to mean? He knows that the surest way to keep Donald from doing something is to insist that he do it. It's always been that way. Are you sure you haven't been reading too much psychology? It's true. And in spite of Donald's academic maturity, he's almost like a child in some things. Emotional sometimes. That... That's another reason why I wonder if Donald really wants to marry me. If he loves me enough. Or if he's simply rebelling against his uncle. You feel, then, that Mr. Turnbull is opposing the expedition to be sure that Donald will make it? Yes, because he doesn't quietly reason with Donald, talk things out. He shouts, he storms, he threatens. And that gets Don's back hair up, huh? Makes him more determined to go than ever. Wouldn't it do the same to you? <laughs> Maybe so. And I'm afraid that if he does go, he'll never come back. You honestly don't want him to go? No. Just what you think might happen to him. This curse of Kamashek you mentioned? I think that would be the excuse for his uncle to have something happen to him. Well, what is this curse? Do you remember King Tutankhamun? Well, I remember hearing and reading something about him, old Egyptian pharaoh. His tomb had a curse on it, too. But because they believed it would yield important historical data and some of the treasure of those ancient dynasties, an expedition went to the Valley of the Kings and excavated it anyhow. You're really happy on this stuff, aren't you? Because of Donald's interest in it, I guess. But listen to me. One after another, people who were involved in that expedition died under very mysterious circumstances. Yeah, I remember. Even Lord Carnivan himself. They said that he died from the results of a mosquito bite and pneumonia. But the other deaths were not so easily explained away. Not even by able scientists and doctors. You believe in the curse of King Tut, then? And now the curse of Kamashek? No. Oh, I don't. But from what you just told me... There have been too many other tombs, all bearing warnings, where the people who dug into them touched the treasures in them, even touched the remains of the kings, had no harm at all come to them. Well, then I'm afraid I don't see what you're driving at. This, Johnny. Any mysterious death of someone who's explored one of these ancient tombs will be accepted as a result of the curse, don't you see? It's an open door to murder. You know something, to me it all sounds a little far-fetched. No. Because of Eric Turnbull... Because I'm sure he wants Donald out of the way. For his money. This terrible friction between them, this antagonism that's been building up for years. And it's reached a point where either one of them would be glad to see the other out of the way. But Eric Turnbull is the only one who's evil enough to do something about it. Well, I gotta admit, the sparks kind of flew between them when I saw them together. And don't forget it would be to his uncle's advantage if Donald were to die. He needs the money? Well, no, I guess he doesn't. Well, what about you? I'm doing all right at the museum. I'm earning enough to live on, and I'm happy in my work. Just the same as I understand it, you'd collect half of Donald's life policy. I hate you for even thinking about such a thing. I'd hoped you would help me save Donald's life. Funny, though, isn't it? Funny. Eric Turnbull is my employer in this case, if there really is a case. Because he's smart. He's clever. He's clever enough to know that calling you in would help cover up anything he might do. All right, look. Suppose Eric Turnbull did want, did plan to get rid of Donald. How? I don't know. But this I do know. And it's the thing that has scared me. On his last expedition, and he didn't realize it until afterwards, one of the men in his party, a man he'd selected himself, turned out to have been paid separately by Mr. Turnbull. Why not? He probably wanted somebody there to look after Donald without his knowing. Listen to me. This man caused a couple of accidents. At least they call them accidents that could have cost Donald his life. Oh, no, Dorothy, look. No, please. no. No, I can see that you don't believe anything I've told Dorothy, you. Dorothy, I think you're just building up something in your imagination. You don't doesn't... believe me. But at least do this. Remember, no matter what happens, remember what I've told you. Somebody was lying. That was a cinch. But who? And why? Unless one of them really was plotting against the life of Donald Cronin. I couldn't get it out of my head that at least Eric Turnbull didn't need whatever money would come from Donald's death. Dorothy Harkness, on the other hand, would gain what to her would be plenty. Sure, nearly a million would go to Turnbull, but that would mean much less to him than the 50,000 insurance would to her. Well, there seemed to be nothing more to say to her at the moment, so I left her, took a cab back to the station, that's item 5, 65 cents, and telephoned to the house on Birchbrook Road in the hope that Donald would be home and I'd have a chance to talk to him. 
Hello? Oh, Mr. Turnbull, uh, this is Johnny Dollar. Oh, splendid. Where are you? Well, I'm at the station, but I was calling to try and... Splendid. Haskins will drive the car down to meet you immediately. Well, uh, now... I knew that if you thought it over, you'd be willing to take on this case. Uh, yeah, sure. You just wait right there. Haskins will be along in a few minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Dollar. Well, thank you, but before we, uh, before we talk about this Sit down, thing... won't you? Now, from what I've been able to learn, Donald is planning to leave for Egypt immediately. I, uh, checked with a friend at the Explorers Club in New York where the boy's been staying these past few days. Oh, I thought he always stayed right here with you. Well, he does, except when he's preparing for an expedition. Then you are going to let him go. Well, how can I stop him without making him look foolish in the eyes of his colleagues? The museum, the universities are so interested in his work... Yes, I have to let him go. But with you beside him there... Oh, wait a minute. Of course, I'll expect you to be with him during the entire expedition. Well, now, look, I... Remember this, no expense is to be spared in the protection of my nephew's life. I uh, had to go down to New York to see David Wilt. He's my stockbroker, Harris Dillman Company. While I was there, I stopped at my bank and arranged to have some 5,000 in American Express Chavers checks ready for you. All you have to do is go down there and sign them, pick them up. If you need more, cable me. You don't waste any time, do you? I know Donald. He's very stubborn, determined, and willful. <laughs> and in his present frame of mind, he might pack up and take off at a moment's notice. I want to be sure you're at his side. Okay, you're the boss. But, Mr. Turnbull... Yes? You still haven't told me why you think his life is in any more danger on this expedition than on any of the others he's undertaken. Because that girl, Dorothy Harkness, is smart, is clever... And because of something that happened on Donald's last expedition in Yucatan. Oh? He didn't realize it until afterwards. But one of the men in his party, a man he'd selected himself, turned out to be a friend of this Dorothy Harkness. Not 20 minutes ago, I heard exactly... Now listen to me. This man caused a couple of accidents. At least they called them accidents. That could have cost Donald his life. And Mr. Dollar, though lacking any proof, I am convinced he was put up to them by the beneficiary of his insurance policy. Dorothy Harkness. Did I say somebody was lying? Somebody had to be lying. And by now, that old feeling was beginning to come back to me, that hunch, whatever it is, that told me somebody was planning to kill Donald. Harry Turnbull? Dorothy Harkness? Who? Something told me I'd better get to Donald Cronin, but fast. Here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, suddenly the reason for a carefully planned murder becomes crystal clear. And a race against death becomes a race for my own life. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>